awesome. So great, because I just love the rats. <sighs> Rat Saga, part, I don't even know what we're up to now. So, sitting on the porch this morning, having our coffee, having a nice morning, it's cool again, so it was a beautiful morning. And then Ben stops the conversation and says, I just saw a rat run into the shed. Great. So I said, what? <laughs> and we go running over here to the shed, and he says, yeah, I just saw it wiggle its way up through the door, the corner, into the shed. Right there. And its little tail went slithering in. We've got it locked now. So, we open the door and we see he went over here and he went back there and Ben tried to chase him and he went into the corner and then around under the workbench. As far as we know, he's still in here, which is really creepy. They have found the chicken food, the scratch, and the food. They've ripped into the bags. Yay. Now we need to get buckets or paint or uh, trash cans or something to keep those in. I'm actually really surprised that they have not found it earlier because we've kept the food out here for so long and we've had the rats for so long and the two have not mixed yet until now. So now they know that it's out here and we need to do something about it. So we go back to our coffee on the porch. Again, having a nice chat, enjoying our cool morning. Kids are still in their beds. Everything's great. And then I stop the conversation I just saw a rat run behind the doghouse. So we go over here. That doghouse was there. I saw the little bugger run from the garden behind the doghouse. So Ben moves the doghouse and he's right there just sitting trying to get back. So he runs this way back into the garden and under the tomatoes. At which point Ben is now chasing it into the garden and picks up this chain to smash the rat with, runs into the garden, goes over to the tomato bush, tries to find the little bugger, drops the chain straight down onto the tomato bush. Didn't do much except smush the tomato bush. Little bugger gets scared, runs that way over to our other set of tomatoes and is in here somewhere. Or at least he was this morning. Not sure if he's still there now. But then we find that they're digging up our onions. Cool, thanks guys. And they've made a little rat tunnel, which goes all the way across to this side. Ben filled it in, so now it's just dirt. But apparently they're digging up our onions too. Awesome, so great, because I just love the rats. <sighs> but, happy ending to an otherwise gross and disgusting story. While Ben was digging through the tomatoes to find the rat and hopefully smash the little bugger to pieces, he did find ripe tomatoes! I'm so excited, I have tomatoes! Now, granted, one has blossom and rot, and it's only two, and they're not fully ripe, but they're mine! I'm so excited! I could just hug them forever. I'm so happy for tomatoes. So, at least the rats have not eaten all of my tomatoes. I got some ripe ones, finally. I can at least say that I got ripe tomatoes off my plants this year. Super happy for that. Okay, second rat story, which preludes this one. Saturday, Saturday night, you saw the movie of us sitting up on our roof like total rednecks, watching the fireworks show from the speedway that is a couple blocks up the road. Great night, super awesome night. We had let the chickens out that morning and they went to bed while we were up on the roof and we remembered that we needed to lock the coop. So, Ben came out here at about 10.30, 11 o'clock with a flashlight to lock up the coop and saw a rat. The rat was running across the boxes and stopped about right here. Now, my very brave, very amazing husband 
did something that is both sexy and disgusting at the same time. He did not have anything to get this rat. No trap, no bucket, no hammer, no nothing. So what did my wonderful husband do? He grabbed the rat by the tail <laughs> with his bare hands and slammed the rat as hard as he could on the bricks. <laughs> At which point the rat screamed and kind of died and it wasn't dead all the way, so he smashed it with his bare foot. Again, sexy and really disgusting at the same time. But that was a full-grown rat. We now have one less full-grown rat on our property. No more baby making for that one. And it was kind of cool in a really freaky, gross sort of way that he killed a rat with his bare hands. <laughs> so guys, the rat saga continues. I feel like it's never going to be over at this point, but at least they're not in our house anymore. I don't think. I haven't heard any rats in quite a while. No skittering across our bedroom ceiling. No sounds under the shower. He sealed up a hole that they were getting into, so hopefully they're not in our house anymore, or at least we're down to like the bare minimum of rats in our attic. Now they're just in the garden, running around, eating my tomatoes. The fact that they were out during the day today kind of freaked me out, like that doesn't seem to be normal, but I'm hoping that's just a sign that they're so desperate and they're like trying to find safe places to be. There are no safe places here, rats. You need to leave. So, there we are. One big rat down. Two running around somewhere in our yard and our shed. But I have tomatoes! All right, let's check on this lard. I started it again this morning on the stovetop and it just seems like it's taking so long. So, and I didn't want it to burn because it looked like it was just kind of getting a little burned. So I turned on the oven to 200, stuck it in there, took the lid off, um, and it's been sitting for, I don't know, a couple hours now. So hopefully it's doing what it's supposed to. Let's check on it, let's see what happens. It's probably not even close to done yet, but hopefully it's at least going, right? All right, let's see if I can do this without burning my arm. Oh yeah, not bad. Still got a long ways to go. There's quite a bit of fat in there. But it's getting there. Oh, and it's squishy too. Okay, so I'm stabbing these pieces of fat and I can just stab right through them. So that's a good sign. It means they're melting and getting down there. I think the oven might be the best way to go. I am liking the oven a lot better for a couple different reasons. One, I don't have an open flame and a hot pot just sitting here, you know, with the kids running around. Like, they get their drinks that sit right next to the stove and all that, so I don't have to worry about them just touching a hot pot. They're pretty good about it, but you never know. And then two, um, it seems more even to me. So it's at 200, the whole thing is getting hot, and it's not just like a constant flame right on the bottom. So hopefully this will work a little bit better. It's already six, <laughs> so I don't know how long this is gonna take. This might be like a three day lard fest for like a pound of lard, but we'll see. And when I came in this morning, after I turned it off last night and it sat overnight, um, I opened the lid and the lard that had already rendered already was just the most gorgeous, beautiful, white, rendered lard. And that was just a little bit of it. So if that's any indication of what I'm gonna get at the end, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is gonna be the most beautiful lard ever. <laughs> We're gonna let it sit for a couple more hours and that's it. I might even have to wait till tomorrow. So we'll see. I was hoping to show you finished lard today, but apparently that's not gonna happen. So we will wait. Patience is a virtue, right? Yeah. Um.